In the words of the legendary chef and my personal hero, Anthony Bourdain, food is everything we are. It's an extension of a nationalist feeling, ethnic feeling, your personal history, your province, your region, your tribe, your grandma. It's inseparable from those from the get-go. Welcome to Every Dish, A Story, a podcast about a place of food in our lives and what it meant to our ancestors. I'm your host, Kat, and I'm going to take you to a new location every two weeks to connect to who we are. There's a saying that apple pie is like duct tape. It fixes everything. Welcome to Every Dish Story, episode 11. I'm your host, Kat, and today we're traveling around Europe, Russia, and North America. Charlotte, from French Charlotte, is a delicate dessert with apples, baked in dough, and is a type of apple pie. Classic Charlotte is a sweet dish made with white bread, custard, eggs, fruit, and liqueur. The idea of the classic Charlotte was borrowed from the English. Charlotte appears to be a type of pudding, which is usually served hot. The bottom of the dish is lined with bread, softened in butter or egg mixture. Then a layer of apples, boiled with sugar or pureed, is placed on top, and then covered with another layer of softened bread. Then it's baked in the oven and served hot with either ice cream, whipped cream, or sweet sauces. There are many different variations of fillings, but apple filling is the most common, because apples are cheap and readily available in Europe. Apple pie is traditionally made in the fall, when the apple harvest ends. Apples can be replaced with pears, plums, or other fruits and berries, and the fruit layer can be replaced with cream or chocolate mousse. Let's talk about Russian style of Charlotte. As a Russian myself, I'm very familiar with this pie. It was a very common pie in the Soviet times when flour and apples were always um, cheap and available and people used to grow apples themselves. But I wasn't aware of the classic recipe that was actually created by a French chef. So let's dive in. So Russian Charlotte was invented in the early 19th century by Marie-Antoine Carême, a French chef in the service of Tsar Alexander I of Russia. Originally known as Charlotte de la Parisienne, it later became known worldwide as Charlotte Russe. Charlotte Russe is made by filling the dish with ready-made salted biscuit or sponge cake and then filling them with either Bavarian cream or whipped cream. The cake is then refrigerated until it solidifies, so there's no baking involved. In the Soviet times, as part of the fight against the corruption and influence of the West, it was renamed into apple babka. Babka is another word for babushka, which um, foreigners <laughs> really seem to be fond of. And it's very, very evident, because in the 1952 edition of the Book of Taste and Healthy Food, this recipe is still referred to as Charlotte, and in the 1955 edition, it is actually called babka, of white bread with apples. These days, in Russia and former Soviet republics, the easy-to-prepare apple pie, which is known as Charlotte, is a simple biscuit with a filling made of sliced apples. So who is Charlotte? Well, there are several theories of the origin of the name of this dish. One is that the recipe was suggested by Queen Charlotte, wife of King George III of England. According to another version, the name comes from the English word Charlotte, meaning a dish of whipped eggs, sugar and milk. A meat dish with similar name was popular in 15th century England. There's also a romantic story about a chef who fell desperately in love and dedicated the dessert he invented to the woman named Charlotte. At the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th centuries, there were many German bakers in Russia, where this cake was made from leftover bread and pastries. Russians laughed at the fact that German women saved money and actually baked cakes out of breadcrumbs. And the women themselves were called Charlotte behind their backs. The name Charlotte was so popular at the time that it became a nickname for all German women living in Russia. The one thing for sure is that all modern apple pies and Charlottes trace their origins back to the English pudding. The English seem to create pudding out of anything. The recipe for English pudding is very simple and there are many, many variations. The earliest and simplest pudding was a cold dessert called crudo, which consisted of layers of moist, thin slices of bread and sliced fruit in between them. In both versions, uh, the cold and the baked pie, the base is a moist, thin slice of bread or biscuit placed in a small dish and filled in the center with poached fruit. The most common and popular version is apple pie. 
Bread was dipped in a mixture of butter, syrup, and wine. George III, who ruled England in the 18th century, was the patron saint of apple pickers, along with his wife, Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg, Strelitz. He is believed to be the one who invented the apple pie called Charlotte. But there really is no evidence to that, because the pudding existed before Queen Charlotte, so maybe she just perfected the recipe. But there are also no records of that. And of course, there's the romantic legend of an English cook who fell madly in love with a girl named Charlotte and made a wonderful apple pudding for her, which he named after her. The name, the place where she lived, where she worked, and at least the time she lived, is actually unknown, except for the wonderfully named cake. So this is a very, very dubious version, but it has survived well over the years because people like a romantic story. And then, of course, the pie is attributed to Marie Antoine Carême, a late 18th and early 19th century French chef who was one of the founders of modern haute cuisine and has been called the royal chef and the king of cooks. However, he merely perfected the Charlotte cake and created a new version of it known as Charlotte Russe. He did so in 1802 by filling the dish with ladyfingers and with Bavarian cream and jelly in the center instead of bread. The Charlotte pie was so cold that it was called Charlotte of Paris. However, in 1814, Tsar Alexander I of Russia was victorious in Paris. And since then, this cake has been known around the world as Charlotte Bruce. A large variety of fruits and berries are used to make this pie, but the apple is the most known throughout the world. The pie was originally a bread pudding, and it was made cold or raw. It consisted of thin slices of bread soaked in boiled fruit syrup arranged on a plate with thin slices of fruit between the layers of bread and completely covered with thin slices on top. Over time, the bread was dipped in butter, wine or even an egg-milk mixture. But now the thin slices of bread were not stacked on top of each other, but stacked on the bottom and sides of the pan, with fruit in the center. And this is how we get a very familiar type of pie. Let's go back to Russia for a second. Charlotte Russe didn't uh, actually gain any popularity in Russia. At the beginning of the 20th century, Charlotte became a very simple sponge cake with apples, which every housewife knows how to make. Many generations grew up on this simple pie recipe. Today there are many variations as well, but we tend to stick to the very simple version, which is not even a recipe, but a ratio that everyone <laughs> feels to their own taste. One cup of flour, one cup of sugar, four eggs, half a teaspoon of baking powder sprinkled with vinegar. Charlotte Russe did not become famous in Russia, but is very popular in Europe and America. Charlotte arrived on the continent with a group of immigrants and soon a legend was born. As a result, the Americans made some improvements and created a wonderful new pie that has become a real national pride and a symbol of American freedom. Apple pie is right up there with Mickey Mouse, Coca-Cola and Ford trucks when it comes to Americana. It's been served on 4th of July barbecues and Thanksgiving feasts for generations and it's arguably the country's most iconic meal. A lot of people don't realize that apple pie isn't nearly as American as they think. Apples aren't native to North America and they didn't start growing there until European migrants arrived. And what about cinnamon and nutmeg? Well, they came from all over the world, including Sri Lanka and Indonesia. So apple pie originally appeared in England in 1390, centuries before the pilgrims ever set foot on Plymouth Rock, as a result of culinary influences from France, the Netherlands and the Ottoman Empire. European settlers eventually took apple pie to the colonies, where it immediately became popular. Two recipes for the fruit-based dessert were included in America's first cookbook, American Cookery by Amelia Simmons, published in 17. 96. Apple pie gained popularity in American cuisine in the 18th and 19th centuries because it was very simple and inexpensive. However, it wasn't until the 20th century that it became recognized as a cultural identity when advertising, news and two world wars converted the meal into a nationalist symbol. Though the precise origin of the term as American as apple pie is unknown, it was used in the 1928 New York Times story to characterize First Lady Lou Henry Hoover's homemaking abilities. By World War II, it had become a symbol of feminine love and comforts of home, and men proudly declared that they were fighting for their mother and apple pie. 
aside from the phony symbolism, apple pie does represent America, but not for the reasons that you might think. Apple pie is uniquely American in that it symbolizes how cultures from all over the world can come together to create something new and great. American people are all immigrants, just like apples. When you say something is as American as apple pie, what you're really saying is that the item arrived to this nation from somewhere else and was turned into a very American experience. European and Asian cultures had already adapted apples to their diet thousands of years before the pilgrims set sail for the New World. Alexander the Great made the earliest documented reference to the apple in 328 BCE, when he noticed that Kazakhstan's apples appeared to be dwarfed before taking them back to Macedonia to be formed. Sweet and savory pies were already popular in England by the late 14th century, so it's no wonder that apples found their way into these pastries. But due to the expensive cost of sugar, they were customarily baked without a crust. Dutch bakers did not adapt the crustless apple pie into the lattice-style pastry we see today until the 15th century. Within a century, the pies had spread throughout Europe, including Italy, Germany, and France. There is actually one type of apple that grows in North America, the crab apple. The story of Johnny Appleseed popularized the idea that this young man grew lovely, delicious apples for eating. Nevertheless, the crab apple is a sour, inedible fruit that Mr. Appleseed allegedly used to make hard cider. In the mid-1600s, ships arrived with trees yielding modern-day apples via outside trade channels. The fruit, however, did not uh, actually blossom until European honey bees were brought over to the Americas decades later because there was no method to fertilize the trees. In Alan Metcalf's book, America in So Many Words, Words That Have Shaped America, published in 1997, the first apple pie was mentioned. Apple pie, which is thought to have been brought over by the Swedish, Dutch and British immigrants, swiftly became the staple of American cuisine. However, rather than recognizing the dish's genuine cultural origins, settlers called it uniquely American. American Cookery, America's first cookbook, contains two apple pie recipes, none of which claims to be the original. The pie had become an important component of American culture by the turn of the century. The dish made its way into literary works in the early 1920s, and the phrase, as American as apple pie, was coined as the patriotism term in the 1940s. And while apple pie may not be considered American, its history in the United States has been intimately intertwined into the country's cultural fabric. On this note, I would like to wrap up our little mini journey into the world of apple pies. As always, head on over to my YouTube channel, Cheddar Cats, where I will show you how to make a classic uh, apple pie. Of course, you will also find full recipes on my website. All the links are in the description. Thank you so much for being here. Eat well, train hard, love cats. Also, please recycle when you can. And wherever you are in the world, I hope that you are healthy and you are safe. Bye-bye for now, and I'll be back on February 3rd with a new journey.